Welcome to another Yarnspirations tutorial. My name is Brittany and I teach over at Be Hooked and today I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet one of Yarnspirations newest patterns, the Crochet Marled Chair Pad. Head over to Yarnspirations.com to download your free pattern and let's get started. Before we get started, what you want to do is grab two skeins of color A and we're going to be working with one strand from each one of these. So we can go ahead and put those aside and place the two strands together and we're going to create our slip knot. Now place that loop on your hook and to start things off, we want to chain four. Now, since we're going to be working in the round, we need to join this to form a ring. And the way we want to do that is to locate our first chain. So the one that's right next to our slip knot, insert your hook just into that chain. I've caught just one of the loops of the chain. It looks like two because there's two strands there. And then we're going to slip stitch. So grab the working yarn, pull it through the chain and then through the loops on your hook. Now we're left with just a little blob of yarn here. And what I like to do is find the center of that because that's where we're going to be working our stitches for the first round. So I'm going to grab it with the slip knot on top, grab it from the two sides and pull it open. Then you'll see that opening there in the middle. I like to stick my finger in there just to keep track of it. And we're ready to start on round one. So to begin round one, we're going to chain three. This is going to count as one double crochet. So these three chains are going to be our first of 12 total double crochets. Now, if you're brand new to crocheting, a breakdown of the double crochet stitch is just to wrap the yarn around your hook, insert it into the middle of that ring, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now we're left with three loops on our hook. Again, don't be confused by the double strands there. We're treating them as one. Then we'll yarn over and pull through two of those three. We're left with two. Then we'll yarn over and pull through those remaining two. Now what we've done there is we've made our first two double crochets. Again, that chain three counts as one. We need to have a total of 12. So we're going to make 10 more in the center of this ring and just rotating your work as you go. Another little tip, if you can manage holding on to that tail here at the back of the work, I like to work over this as I go. It's just one less end that I have to weave in at the end of the project. And so you can see as I'm working in the middle of the ring, I have the tail draped over the hook as well. And that way I can just work the stitch right over it. It locks it into place and then I never have to worry about it again. As you work your double crochet stitches in the middle of the ring, you can see how I'm just rotating it as I go. The other thing you'll need to do is give yourself some room. So just slide your stitches down to make room for the remaining stitches. Now, when you get to the end of your round, it's a good practice to go ahead and count your stitches before you move on. We need to have a total of 12 double crochets before we join with a slip stitch here and just count it one post at a time. That's the easiest way to do it. Once you're certain you have 12 stitches, then we're going to focus our attention on the chain three. We need to locate that third chain and join with a slip stitch there. So the first chain is right here, the second, and then the third. So I'm going to insert my hook into that third chain, yarn over, pull through the chain and then pull through the loop on my hook. Now that completes round number one. We're moving on now to round number two and what we need to do to start off this round and all of the other rounds we're going to do is chain three. And once again, this chain three is going to count as a double crochet. And in order to continue working in a nice round flat piece, we have to increase at specific increments. For round two, 
we're going to increase every stitch. Now you're probably wondering, what is an increase? Well, an increase is where you work two double crochets in the same stitch. So I have my chain three, this counts as my first double crochet, and then I just need to find the space where I slip stitched. So that's actually that third chain, I can see the little opening right there. I wanna make my next double crochet into that space. And then I have increased by one stitch for this stitch right here. Now in order to get some of that separation and some of the texture, we're only going to be working in the back loops only of each stitch. So typically we would work, this is my next post here. So normally we might be used to working in two loops of the stitch, but that's not the case for this pattern. We're going to find just the back loop. So this guy right here, and that's where we're going to work all of our stitches for all of the remaining rounds. I'm gonna double crochet, so I'll yarn over, insert my hook just in that back loop only, and double crochet. But remember, we have to increase for every stitch on this round, round number two. So I'm gonna make another double crochet in the same space, in that same stitch, in that back loop only. Now as you work in the back loop only, it's going to expose the front loop, and as we work a little bit more, you're going to see a little line, and that adds to the texture of this design. Now we'll demonstrate that one more time. I'm gonna locate my next stitch so I can see the V here, or if you're just locating the post, you can see it right there. Make two double crochets into that back loop only. And there we've increased by another stitch. So we're gonna repeat this until we get to the end of the round. Since we ended with 12 stitches on the first round and we're increasing every stitch on round two, we're going to double our stitch count. So at the end of round number two, we should have a total of 24 stitches. You'll wanna count that to make sure you're on the right track. And we'll meet back up at the end of this round to see how to finish it off. So when you've reached the end of your round, you do want to make sure that you have counted your stitches. Again, we're gonna have a total of 24. That's gonna be your best indicator that you've reached the end of the round. Things can get a little confusing here because this open space, it looks and feels like a stitch. So we're always inclined to work some stitches in there and that'll actually increase too much. So double check and count that you have 24 up until this point. Then you're going to locate your chain three. So this guy right here, Find that third chain and stick your hook in it. And we're gonna join with a slip stitch there. So pull that working yarn through the chain and then through the loop on your hook. Now that completes round number two and we're ready to learn a new technique because we need to change colors now for round number three. So when you've reached the end of round number two, we have two rounds of double-stranded color A held together, I'm just going to trim my working yarn and just catch both of those strands. And then what I like to do is join my next round or my next colors while I still have this working loop on my hook. I'm gonna demonstrate that. So just leave your tail there. We're going to get rid of one of our color A skeins and then we're gonna pair that with a B. So now we have one B and one A strand, we're gonna hold those together. Then I'm going to fold it over, leaving myself a tail that's about the same length as the other one. A couple of inches will give you enough to pull it through and to weave it in later. And then just place that on your hook. I'm holding on to the, the ends there with my, my fingers here in the background. And then I'm just gonna pull it through the loop on my hook. Now this has created one chain for me, and again, we're gonna start the third round with three chains, but before I can move on to that, I need to secure some of these tails in the background. And what I like to do is just tie a loose knot that's going to secure it just long enough for me to work a few stitches, and then I can come back to it later and weave it in. So now I'm gonna make my remaining two chains, because again, every single round starts with three chains, and that 
that three chains, it counts as one double crochet. Now, as we've progressed to this third round, we do need to continue increasing in order to make our circle round and flat, but we're going to change the increments a little bit. So for round number two, we increased every stitch. For round three, we need to increase every other stitch. And we're going to increase right here at the beginning. So where I have my chain three, that counts as my first stitch. I'm gonna locate that same chain where that chain three is coming from. So where my slip stitch was. And that's where I wanna work my next double crochet. So this is very much like we did for the previous round. And what I have done here is I have made an increase right here at the beginning. So chain three counts as one double crochet. Then of course I have my other double crochet in that space. Now I don't want to increase every stitch this time, just every other. So I've made my increase here. That means I just want to double crochet once in the next stitch. Now find your next post, which is right here. Sometimes it gets hidden a little bit in that join. So be mindful of that. Find your back loop of that stitch and work a double crochet. Now, since I did not increase on that last stitch, I'm going to increase on the next one. So make two double crochets in your next stitch. And then we are not going to increase on the next one. So I think you're getting the hang of it for now. Go ahead and finish up round number three, working this stitch pattern repeat. So increase, don't increase. In other words, two double crochets followed by one double crochet. And if you get lost, like let's say you lose track of things, then just go back and look. I can see that I made two double crochets in one stitch here. That means this is just a single and I can move on to put two double crochets in the next. Now, once again, when you've reached the end of your round, you wanna make sure you count your stitches. At the end of round number three, we're gonna have a total of 36 stitches. And that's because we did not increase every stitch, but we increased every other stitch. So we added 12 stitches this round, giving us a total count of 36. Again, you just wanna be mindful of that last stitch. Don't work any stitches there because that is a part of our beginning here. So we're gonna find our chain three, insert your hook into that chain, and slip stitch to complete the round. So there are a couple things that we need to keep track of as we work through this pattern. It's very simple, we just have six rounds total. We've already worked through half of them together. Well, there's two things we need to keep track of. The first thing is our color pattern repeat. And to review that, we do two rounds where we're holding A together. We do two rounds where we're holding an A and a B strand together. And then we do two rounds where we're holding two strands of B together. So I've made my first round holding A and B together. That means I can just go ahead and work one more round with the same colors that I have here. Once I finish up that fourth round, I'll cut the yarn just like we saw before. I'll hold two strands of B together and continue on with the final two rounds. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about crocheting in the round because there is a pattern to this. Now, of course, you can follow the, the written instructions and tell you exactly how to work the next three rounds. You've got all the techniques that you need to do that, but I do wanna give you a little glimpse of the mathematics behind working in the round. It's actually quite simple. So here we're looking at a finished chair pad. This is just one of the sides. And up until this point, we have finished three rounds. So this is round number one, round number two, and round number three. Now we've seen at the end of round one, our stitch count was 12. At the end of round two, our stitch count was 24. And at the end of round three, our stitch count was 36. Now we're gonna follow this trend in that we're increasing by 12 stitches every single round. So at the end of round number four, we're gonna have a total of 48 stitches. At the end of round number five, we're gonna have 60. And at the end of round number six, 
we're going to have 72 stitches. So this is kind of your general idea for the end of each round. I'm going to go ahead and label these as well. So this is round number four, round number five, and round number six. Now we can see here and we understand that we're increasing by 12 stitches every single round. But in order to keep our chair pads round and flat, we have to do so at specific increments. We saw for round number two, we increased every stitch. For round number three, we increased every other stitch. Well, for rounds four, five, and six, we're just going to add a stitch in between each one of those increases. So I want to highlight one of the increases we see right here for round number three. Then we have a single, then we have an increase, and a single, and an increase. Now moving on to round four, we're going to find an increase right here. Then you'll see a, a double crochet, a double crochet, and then an increase, and then a double, a double, and an increase. So that means we're increasing every third stitch. Now as we progress to round five, you're going to see the same trend. Here's an increase right here, so we'll start off there. We have a double, a double, a double, and then an increase, and then a double, a double, a double, and an increase. So we're increasing every fourth stitch for round five. And we're going to follow the same trend for round number six. Here is an increase, so that's a good starting point. Then I have a double, a double, a double, a double, and an increase. So I have four double crochets in between my increases. That is always going to be the trend when you're crocheting in the round. You always have to increase in even increments in order for it to stay round and flat. And just a little trick here, however many stitches you start with in round number one, so in our case, 12 stitches, that's going to be how many stitches you increase every single round. So following the written instructions and the principles we just learned about crocheting in the round, we're going to start off round number four in the same way, chain three, work through that round. We're going to cut the yarn and then join two strands of color B together to work the final two rounds. Once you get to the end of your sixth round, we're ready to fasten off and weave in our ends. And I'm going to show you how to do that next. So off camera, I have finished crocheting my entire chair pad and I'm ready to fasten off. So to do that, it's just like changing colors. We're just going to trim the yarn. And now instead of pulling the tail through the loop on our hook, I'm going to show you an alternate way to finish things off because this gives you a little bit more clean looking edge here or join. So just pull up on your working yarn and pull that tail all the way through. We're going to do what's called an invisible join. So you'll thread your two strands on the darning needle. Now looking at it from the top, you want to find your first stitch that's right next to where we just fastened off. And then stick your darning needle under both loops of that V of that stitch from front to back. Then pull it all the way through. Now locate the stitch that, well, the very last stitch is right here. And we're going to take our tail or take our darning needle and poke it down in through the middle and out the back. Now when we do that, we've basically just created an extra little V there. So that's why they call it the invisible join because it kind of just hides itself and it looks a little bit cleaner than some of the other options. Now all that's left to do is to weave in our ends. So flipping it over to the back side here, I'm just going to take this tail that I have on my darning needle right now and find this last row of stitches and just work my darning needle under a few stitches in one direction. And then if you have enough tail, it's always a good idea to go back in the other direction just for a little bit of extra security. 
And once you finish that, you can go ahead and trim what's left. And here I had a couple of new ball of yarn joins, so I have a few more ends than you might have yourself. Now, the first thing you wanna do is, if you made little knots in those joins where we, where we changed to different colors, you can go ahead and undo those knots. And we're just gonna weave these in the same way that we just wove in that last tail. So all you need to do is weave in all of the tails on this back side and, and we'll finish things up. Now there is an alternate because we are going to basically tuck all of this on the inside. We're sewing two pieces together and so you're technically not going to see what's on this back side. So if you wanted to, you could skip this step all together and just tie things off. Make sure you have nice sturdy knots. That way it's not going to come undone on you. And then you technically don't even have to weave them in. You could just tie it in knots and then cut the tails nice and short. So once you have all of your tails woven in, of course we're going to create that second piece. Um, you could get a little bit playful with color. So you'll see what I did was I made both of my sides match completely. So I did not change up the order in which I worked my, my color transitions. So that's an option, or you can follow the pattern exactly, and in which case you're just going to invert the color pattern. Whatever you wanna do, just follow your written instructions for the pattern to make that second piece. And the last piece of the puzzle that we're going to cover here is how to sew them together, or how to, uh, how to crochet them together. So let's have a look at how to do that next. Okay, so the last thing you need to do is stitch the two sides together. So I mentioned before, I went with the same color pattern for both the front and the back, but if you're following the pattern exactly, it's gonna look a little bit different. It'll be inverted, so we'll have the light on the outside and the dark in the middle, if that's the color pattern that you chose to go with. So you're gonna need your two sides and then color B. So I'm gonna place that aside for a moment and we want to establish what is the right side and the wrong side of each one of our, uh, our, our pieces. So the right side is what was facing us while we were crocheting. It's the side that looks the neatest. And on one of them, we're gonna flip it so that the wrong side is up. Now you can see the texture looks a little bit different on the wrong side here than it does on the right side. Now we're going to take the other one right side up. So the goal here is to put the, the put both wrong sides together and just align them up. We're gonna grab color B, go ahead and create a slip knot. Now holding the two ends together, we can see this row of stitches for the bottom chair pad and this row of stitches for the top chair pad. And what we wanna do is find the back loop from the first one and the front loop from the second one. So insert your hook into the back loop of the first one and the front loop of the other one. Now place our slip knot loop on our hook and we're just gonna pull it through and make a chain just to fasten everything on. Now this time around, we're gonna be working with slip stitches and that's how we're going to get the two sides to stay together. And we're always gonna focus our attention on the back loop on the bottom and the front loop on the top one. So I'm gonna locate my back loop here, insert my hook there, find the front loop of the next one right here, stick my hook under that and slip stitch. And we're just gonna do that around the entire thing making one slip stitch for every stitch, working in the back loop on one side and the front loop on the other side. Now, once you've made it to the end of your round, you're gonna find your first slip stitch, which might be a little bit hard to see, but you can typically find your chain and that'll guide you to the right place. Then stick your hook underneath both of those loops. Now it's probably going to be a little bit snug and you'll have to wiggle your hook into the space. And we're gonna slip stitch to that first slip stitch to finish off the round. Now, just like before, we can go ahead and trim our working yarn. And this time I'm gonna wrap that tail around my hook and pull it through the loop that was there to fasten off. And then all that's left to do is weave in 
these two little ends and what I like to do is just hide them in the middle because I don't want any raw edges poking out on the right side of the work. So I'll just take one of them and then slide it down into the slip stitch, poke it back out, and then just trim that off. Once you finish that, your chair pad is complete.